Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be here on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, UE St. Augustine. I'm Philip Emanuel. The internet has many fathers and mothers, as well as aunts and uncles that did not invent a new internet. The father of the internet should at least invent a new internet. I am called a father of the internet because I am the only father of the internet that invented a new internet. Back in 1989, I was in the news headlines because I was the first person to discover how to parallel process real world problems and how to do so across millions upon millions of processors that were tightly coupled to each other. In parallel supercomputing across my new internet that was a new global network of 65,536 processors that were identical to each other. The most important knowledge is to fully understand how to control and harness every processor that was within my global network of processors. Each processor operated its own operating system. In 1989, I made the news headlines when I recorded the maximum possible speed increase across my ensemble of 65,536 commodity of the shelf processors. That parallel processed speed increase of a factor of 65,536 that was then considered impossible led to my discovery that parallel supercomputing will be the vital technology that will make computers faster and make supercomputers fastest. I discovered practical parallel supercomputing and did so by making a one-to-one -one corresponded and metaphorical mapping and doing so from the vertices of the hypercube to each processor and by making another one-to-one -one corresponded mapping from the bidirectional edges of the hypercube to my email wires. Unlike your cube, my hypercube was defined in 16-dimensional hyperspace and therefore has two raised to power 16 or 64 binary thousand vertices and 16 times as many or one binary million bidirectional edges. Programming 64 binary thousand tightly coupled processors to work together to forecast the weather was in the realm of science fiction and would have been dismissed as an act of insanity and dismissed when I began programming supercomputers back on June 20, 1974 at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Covalis, Oregon, United States. But on the 4th of July, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, I discovered how to turn that science fiction into non-fiction that is used to forecast the weather for your evening news. As the first person to make the news headlines for discovering practical parallel supercomputing, I visualized the vertices and the edges of a hypercube that were etched onto the surface of my hypersphere. I invented the Philip M. Aguale Internet as corresponding to the cut-out silhouette that was my topological metaphor 
for the appearance of my new internet that has a new global network of 65,536 processors that we are identical to each other and that we are tightly coupled to each other. That new supercomputer and the new internet, we are like tightly conjoined twins with only one super brain. In 1989, I was in the news headlines because I discovered practical parallel supercomputing and invented it as the vital technology that now underpins every supercomputer and that enabled me to compute faster and across my new internet and to compute faster than any supercomputer that ever existed. I envisioned my new virtual supercomputer as my new internet. My first visions of my new internet began as a dark shape and as an outline of a blank global network of processors that we are connected with email wires, that we are empty messages. That dark shape of my new internet remained visible inside my mind. It's impossible for me to walk alone and program that new internet and do so without intellectually seeing the exact positions in 16-dimensional space of each of my 65,536 processors. It's also impossible for me to send and receive email messages across my 1,048,576 bidirectional email wires and do so correctly without knowing in advance the exact positions in hyperspace of my 65,000 536 processors. As the first parallel supercomputer scientist, I was not trying to see with my naked eyes any of my 65,536 processors or any of my 1,048,576 bidirectional email wires that married my commodity processors together and did so to form a new internet that tightly circumscribed a globe in 16-dimensional hyperspace. In contrast, I only saw my new supercomputer and my new internet inside my mind, not with my naked eyes, as was often presumed. In a sense, I saw my new internet in its entirety the way you saw our planet Earth in its entirety and understood that it is not flat and do so with your mind, not with, by encircling it around the Earth in a spacecraft. I visualized how to email my 65,536 computer codes as well as email the as many sets of data that I used at the mathematical physics core of my initial boundary value problems. That was how I preloaded each of my 65,536 processors. I visualized how to continuously pump my email messages across my new internet. I visualized each of my email messages as having five subject lines and having no message body and as traversing across my new global network of 1,048,576 email wires that outlined my new internet. In my mind, I sketched my silhouette as the dark shadow of a new internet that encircles the earth. That shadow was created by the sun. The partial differential equations that I invented are the most advanced expressions in calculus. Those partial differential equations are far more abstract than the quadratic equation and for that reason, the layperson cannot scribble them across the blackboard or solve them on or across 
motherboards. The system of nine partial differential equations that I invented are abstract and are de facto invincible. However, I use those partial differential equations as my extreme scaled computational test beds for inventing a new computer, a new supercomputer, and a new internet. In the lecture series on my contributions to mathematics that I posted on Emma Agwale on youtube.com slash Emma Agwale, I described in prose rather than in abstract mathematics how I coded my initial boundary value problem that we are grounded, that we are governed by a system of partial differential equations of calculus. And I did so differently. I did not code my initial boundary value problem for only one processor as was done by other computational mathematicians. I paradigm shifted by parallel supercomputing my initial boundary value problem and doing so across a new internet that is a new global network of 64 binary thousand processors. That solitary act of repetitive coding for each processor that defined and outlined that new internet was my form of meditation. The very essence of my ensemble of processors was to use emails to weave together my new global network of 64 binary thousand processors and to invent a new internet that is one whole cohesive virtual supercomputer that is not a computer per se. In my mind, those 64 binary thousand slowest processors were de facto the fastest supercomputer. That was my metaphor for a futuristic, thought provoking, and poetic internet. That is, I retort my new computer as my new internet and vice versa. I visualize my email messages as traversing across the interior of the 16-dimensional hyperspace and along the bidirectional edges of the hypercube in that hyperspace. I gave form to that ensemble and gave form to it as a never-before-seen internet. For me, that new global network of processors that we are tightly coupled to each other, that we are equal distances apart from each other, and that shared nothing between each other became a mathematized and abstracted internet that is a singular virtual supercomputer. I was in the news in 1989 and thereafter because I was the first person to parallel process across a new internet that was a new global network of 65,000 536 processors that shared nothing between them. I was the first person to theoretically discover that no upper limit exists when parallel supercomputing across an infinite number of processors. Put differently, my inspiration is this. The science fiction of planetary parallel supercomputing across the entire internet that encircled planet Earth could become the non-fiction of our descendants. I was the first person to discover how to parallel process across a new internet that I visualized as a small copy of the planet-sized internet. For that invention that was conceived back in 1974 and completed in 1989, whenever the phrase father of the internet is mentioned. The first name that Google suggests is Philip Emanuele. The contributions to the development of the computer 
that are the subject of school reports are inventions that are paradigm shifting or that change the way we look at the computer. The objective criterion for measuring contributions to the development of the computer is fixed, namely the fastest computation that was executed by any means necessary. My fastest computation that I discovered on the 4th of July, 1989, was executed by parallel supercomputing a grand challenge initial boundary value problem of extreme scale computational physics and solving it across a new internet that was a new global network of 65,536 processors that were tightly coupled to each other, that were identical to each other, that were equal distances apart from each other, but that shared nothing between each other. My scientific discovery that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989, was that parallel processing will become the vital technology that will make the modern supercomputer super. That discovery made the news headlines because it will change the way we look at the computer. I discovered that we should look at the modern computer, not as a computing machinery per se, but as a new internet de facto. That never before seen internet derives its supercomputer horsepower by parallel processing its computational workload across its millions of, of processors that were tightly coupled to each other with each processor operating its own operating system. For me, Philip M. Aguale, that technological breakthrough in massively parallel processing was the supercomputer news headlines that crossed the sea from San Francisco, California to Onitsha, Nigeria, and crossed the sea because it broke new grounds of supercomputing across 65,536 tightly coupled processors that equidistantly encircled a globe that defined and outlined a new internet. Back on June 20, 1974, at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Corvallis, Oregon, United States, I began programming the first computer to be rated at 1 million instructions per second. The first compute, supercomputer was invented in 1946. That first supercomputer was 100 feet long, 10 feet wide, 10 feet tall, and 3 feet deep. So supercomputers were programmed for 28 years before I began to do so. But those supercomputers only solved one problem at a time instead of solving a billion problems at once. But at 8.15 in the morning of the 4th of July, 1989, in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States, I became the first person to discover practical parallel supercomputing. That discovery made the news headlines because it was said to be impossible to parallel process a grand challenge problem and do so across a new internet that is a new global network of unlimited number of processors that were tightly coupled to each other and that shared nothing between each other. The grand challenge problems solved on supercomputers remain essentially the same, but the value and size of the supercomputer market has grown from $7 million back in 1946 to $20 billion a year, or a factor of 3,000. The information technology market is $5 trillion, with more than 40% of that market in North America, primarily in the United States, where nearly 2 million skilled persons are employed in the IT sector. The supercomputer that Japan has on its drawing board will cost $1.25 billion. As a massively parallel supercomputer scientist that came of age in the 1970s and 80s, I walked and walked alone, 
because I took the road less traveled. But I also got noticed more because I did my parallel supercomputer research under unusual circumstances that took me from Onitsha to Oregon back on March 23, 1974. In the 1970s and 80s, no sub-Saharan African-born scientific researcher was hired by any of the numerous U.S. nuclear research laboratories where most supercomputing research was conducted. In 1989, I discovered that a grand challenge problem can be divided into millions of smaller, less challenging problems. And then I further discovered that I could use as many email messages to puzzle together those small problems into the original grand challenge problem that I could then solve across my new internet, that is my new global network of as many processors that each operated its own operating system and that each shared nothing with other nearest neighboring processors. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. Back in 1989, I was in the news headlines because I discovered how the slowest processors can be parallel processed and harnessed to solve once impossible to solve problems and solve them at previously impossible speeds. My discovery created a need for the parallel supercomputer. My discovery of practical parallel supercomputing made the news headlines because it was akin to discovering an undiscovered continent of the unknown world of the new computer and the new internet. The use of 64,000 human computers to parallel process the weather was published as a science fiction story back on February 1, 1922 and published in the book titled Weather Prediction by Numerical Process. The contribution of Philip M. Aguale to the development of the computer is this. I upgraded parallel supercomputing from fiction to non-fiction. So for 67 years onward of 1922, parallel processing was the big and unanswered question of the field of computing. And for that reason, the quest to answer it was described as the grand challenge problem of the field of supercomputing. For 67 years onward of 1922, mathematical scientists attempted to solve the toughest initial boundary value problems and to solve them by dividing each into smaller problems that could be parallel processed with one problem to one processor correspondence and mapped onto one million identical processors that were tightly coupled to each other. Until my discovery of the 4th of July, 1989, progress in solving such grand challenge problems and solving them by parallel processing them was a modest factor of eight. That factor was erroneously decreed by Amla's law of diminishing returns expected from the increase in the speed of supercomputers. My contribution to supercomputing is this. I figured out how parallel supercomputing works and that discovery changed the way we look at the supercomputer that occupies the space of a soccer field and change the way we look at the fastest computer that can be placed on your desk. The computer is a machinery that performs fast calculations. The massively parallel supercomputer is the fastest computer. The Philip M. Aguale Internet is a global network of commodity of the shelf processors that we are identical to each other, that we are tightly coupled to each other, that we are equal distances apart from each other, from each other that shared nothing between each other. 
Each processor operated its own operating system. My contributions to knowledge is this. I discovered a new internet that is a new global network of processors or tiny computers that is not a computer per se, but that is a new, that is a supercomputer de facto. Who invented the internet? The internet has many fathers and mothers, as well as aunts and uncles. But only one father of the internet invented a new internet. The father of the internet should at least contribute new technological knowledge that pertains to the internet and do so by inventing a new internet. I am called a father of the internet because I am the only father of the internet that invented a new internet. I was asked, when the games are over, how will you want to be remembered? What's been around the longest will stay around the longest. One million years ago, our pre-human ancestors counted on their fingers and toes. I believe that in a million years, our post-human descendants will count across their million internet. I will be remembered the longest for my contributions to computational mathematics that changed the way we count and changed it from counting only one thing at a time to counting a billion things at once. I will be remembered for my contributions that changed the way we looked at the computer and changed it from one isolated process of computing only one thing at a time to one billion processors, supercomputing for the parallel processed solution of the toughest real world problems. We remember mathematicians from 3,000 years ago, if and only if their contributions to mathematics is still relevant. We remember Euclid as the father of geometry because the geometry, because geometry is taught in schools. We remember the, the, we will remember the computational mathematician that changed the way we count. Since prehistoric times, our pre-human ancestors counted only one thing at a time. I discovered that we could, count, we could solve real-world problems by counting a billion things at once or by parallel supercomputing the toughest mathematical problems. We will remember the father of the internet. If and only if the internet is still relevant in a million. I am the only father of the internet that invented a new internet. I will be remembered as the first parallel supercomputer scientist that came of age on the 4th of July, 1989. That is my legacy and my contribution to human knowledge that changed the world of computers. I was inducted by the United Nations into its gallery of prominent refugees. The United Nations distributed posters of Philip M. Aguale to refugee camps in Kenya, Rwanda, and Syria alone. And I was getting emails from those refugee camps inviting me to visit their camps. What is Philip M. Aguale famous for? I became known by word of mouth and as follows. In 1989, a 12-year-old wrote a school inventor report on the contributions of Philip M. Aguale 
to the development of the computer. That school inventor report is discussed with her classmates and at her family dinner table or during conversations with her younger friends. The following year, those younger friends are more likely to write school inventor reports on Philip M. Aguale. That word of mouth spreading of school inventor reports and its stickiness is more effective than media mentions. Often students forget how to spell the name Philip M. Aguale, but they have no problem remembering to search for the Nigerian who invented the fastest computer or the African who invented a new internet that is a new global network of processors. I became known via newspaper and magazine articles that were published after my discovery of practical parallel processing, pa practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989. I discovered practical parallel supercomputing and discovered it as the vital technology that will make the supercomputer super. The first audience to discover my story were American school children writing school reports on the team, famous mathematicians and their contributions to mathematics, or great scientists in history, or great inventors and their inventions. Some of those children wrote school reports on Philip M. Aguale and did so in part because their father or mother wrote a school report on Philip M. Aguale. The second audience that discovered my contributions to science were Nigerians and Africans in the continent and in the diaspora. Shortly after the Christmas of 1989, in San Francisco, California, the office of the largest technical organization called the IEEE, as well as some other institutions, issued press releases that announced that I had discovered practical parallel supercomputing and discovered it as the vital technology that will power every supercomputer and that I had invented how to handle 65,000 536 processors to solve the toughest initial boundary value problems arising in mathematical physics and that I had discovered how to solve that grand challenge problem and solve it at the world's fastest supercomputer speeds and that I had solved the problem at the then unheard of speed of 3.1 billion calculations per 3.1 billion floating point arithmetical operations per second. Those 1989 press releases of my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing were picked up by newspapers and magazines, and I began getting requests for media interviews. For the decade preceding 1989, I was mocked and made fun of while I worked alone on parallel supercomputing. But as I became famous, those vector supercomputer scientists that mocked and made fun of me and that refused to work jointly with me and become my co-discoverer of practical parallel supercomputing turned around and insisted that they will now become my new best friend and that I should allow them to become my co-inventors. Their motive was this. If they had collaborated with me and did so for only one minute, they would have gone to the court to fight for a share of the credit for my invention of practical parallel supercomputing and for the invention that I had already invented and invented without there any contribution from them. In the old style of supercomputing, the conventional supercomputer solves grand challenge initial boundary value problems arising in extreme scale computational physics and takes forever 
to solve them in a step-by-step -step fashion that is called serial computing. On the 4th of July, 1989, I discovered a new way of solving those grand challenge problems, namely chopping them into a million smaller, less challenging initial boundary value problems and then simultaneously solving them across a million processors and solving them in a one problem to one processor corresponded mapping that will result in a million fold speed increase. I visualized my processors as identical to each other and as equal distances apart from each other and as interconnected by identical email wires that were lying on the surface of a globe that was represented by a hypersphere in a 16-dimensional hyperspace. In my July 4, 1989 physical parallel supercomputing experiment that made the news headlines in 1989, I divided the grand challenge initial boundary value problem of simulating the flow of crude oil, injected water, and natural gas across an oil field that is one mile deep and that is the size of a town. I did so by dividing that oil field into two raised to power 16 or 65,536 smaller oil fields. I emailed my supercomputer codes and their companion data that I used to simulate each of my smaller oil fields and emailed them to and from 16-bit long email addresses. And I emailed them along 16 times to raise to power 16 email wires. That is, I emailed my data and codes across a new internet and into each processor within my new global network of 64 binary thousand processors that were equal distances apart and that we are on the surface of a globe in the 16th dimension. That was how I solved the grand challenge problem of supercomputing and how I discovered how parallel process makes the computer faster and makes the supercomputer fastest and discovered how to always manufacture the world's fastest computer and do so with the technology of Massively parallel processing. I was born on August 23, 1954, in a small hospital in the British West African colony of Nigeria. The first house that I lived in was the boys' quarter of a small house for servants that was associated with a big house that was at the intersection of Okemeso okay, Street and Oba Adesida Road, Akure, Nigeria, British West Africa. My mother, Inamma Agata Emma Abale, had just celebrated her 15th birthday and did so six days before I was born. The precursor to the modern computer was eight years old when I was born. In 1954, the British colony of Nigeria had a population of 40 million and then had only 150 lawyers, 160 medical doctors, and one trained engineer. When I was born, the word computer was not in the Nigerian vocabulary. Even in the US, the word supercomputer was not in the vocabulary of computer programmers of 1946 through 1967. The word supercomputer was first used in 1967. When I say, quote unquote, the internet, I mean the global network of computers that encircles planet Earth. When I say, quote, unquote, an internet, I mean a global network of processors that encircles a globe. I use the word internet 
to describe my global network of commodity of the shelf processors that were tightly coupled to each other, that shared nothing between each other. I visualized the emails that I sent to and received from each of my 64 binary thousand processors as having traveled along my 1,048,576 email wires that I visualized as etched onto the 15-dimensional hypersurface of a globe that is a hypersphere in my, in my 16th-dimensional mathematical hyperspace. The actual global circulation model that is used for climate studies that inspired my invention of my new internet that is a that is that is that new global network of 65,536 processors was also defined around the globe in three-dimensional physical space. The geophysical flows of air and water are at the core of global warming simulations that are at the core of global warming simulations. We are modeled by using a set of laws of physics that always includes the second law of motion of physics that was discovered 330 years ago. The second law of motion was encoded into a system of coupled, nonlinear, time-dependent, and three-dimensional partial differential equations that I discretize and reduced to a system of equations of algebra that I parallel processed across 64 binary thousand commodity of the shelf processors that were tightly coupled to each other and that shared nothing between each other. That is, I discovered how to simulate the planetary motions of the air and water that enshroud the earth that is a globe of 7,917 and a half miles in diameter. I discovered how to simulate and parallel process around a new global network of processors that is a new internet and a new supercomputer de facto. That was how I invented a new internet that encircled a globe and how I invented that internet and used it to solve a grand challenge initial boundary value problem that enshrouded a globe, namely planet Earth. At its mathematical physics core, that grand challenge problem is an extreme skilled computational physics code developed for the high resolution simulation that must be used to predict global warming. In the geometry of higher dimensions, the globe is defined and outlined by a hypersphere that in turn is defined as a set of points at equal distance from a given point called the center. In my physical experiment that revealed the world's fastest supercomputer and revealed it on July 4, 1989, I visualized my 64 binary thousand commodity of the shelf processors that used high speed interconnects that comprised of one binary million email wires as evenly distributed around a mathematical globe in the 16th dimension that in turn was projected and etched onto the two-dimensional surface of a physical globe in the third dimension. The hypersphere that I used to define my true raised to power 16 commodity of the shelf processors is my generalization of the sphere to the 16th dimension. The hypercube is the similar generalization of the cube from the third dimension to the 16th. I visualized my virtual supercomputer, not as a computer as others did, but as a new internet that is a new global network of processors. I was in the news because I figured out how to harness my 65,536 processors and how to command and control them to automatically send and synchronously receive 
the codes and data associated with my as many initial boundary value problems of mathematical physics. Those codes and data traveled through 16 times, 2 raised to power 16, or 1 binary million bidirectional email wires that had a 1 email wire to 1 hypercube edge correspondence to the as many bidirectional edges of the hypercube in the 16th dimensional mathematical hyperspace. By comparison, your everyday emails are manually sent to you and delivered via a computer. Your email that traveled from Nigeria to the United States was routed across the globe or the internet. That internet and circled planet Earth that is a globe that has a diameter of 7,917 and a half miles. In contrast, my emails around my global network of processors were automated and synchronized across an ensemble of 65,536 processors that I visualized as a new internet in the 16th dimension. I visualized my new internet as defined across the surface of a hypersphere, that is, a globe in higher dimensions that in turn tightly enshrouded a hypercube, that is a cube in higher dimensions. I visualized the 16 times to raise to power 16 or the one binary million bidirectional edges as projected onto its 15 dimensional hypersurface. The honeycomb was the first of my two diagrammatic expressions of my new global networks of commodity off the shelf processors that were identical to each other, that were equal distance apart from each other, that shared nothing between each other, in which, in which each processor operated its own operating system. To others, my honeycomb and hyperbole diagrams represented a supercomputer but I emphasize that it was also a new internet, that is, a new global network of processors that tightly circumscribed a globe in three-dimensional space and in 16-dimensional hyperspace, respectively. That distinction was pivotal. Those two inventions were the reasons I became most searched for and the recurring decimal in discussions on the contributions of the black man that invented a new internet. I'm Philip Emmanuel. I am the only father of the internet that invented a new internet. Thank you. The inventor discovered the possibilities in the world of the impossible. My quest for a never before seen massively parallel supercomputer that was also a new internet de facto was to discover the possibilities in the world of the impossible or to show that the impossible to compute is in fact possible to compute. The quest for new knowledge is akin to walking at night and, and along a narrow footpath in the forest and doing so with a dim lamp. My massively parallel supercomputer research was my personal quest for the new way to the unknown world of the never before seen ensemble of millions of processors that were identical to each other, that were equal distances apart from each other, that outline and define a new internet that is a virtual supercomputer de facto. In the 1970s and 80s, I walked alone along that path and I was only guided by a dim lamp. 
Kwame Nkrumah said socialism without science is void and said forward ever, backward never. Kwame Nkrumah also said we face neither east nor west. We face forward. I say that science moves humanity forward ever. Back on the 4th of July 1989, I discovered that a new internet that is comprised of a new global network of, of the slowest 65,536 processors can be harnessed and used to solve the toughest problems arising in science and engineering and used to solve those problems faster than any supercomputer. China copied that massively parallel supercomputing technology and updated it from my 65,536 processors to its world's fastest supercomputer that is powered by 3,649,600 processors. Parallel processing is the crown jewel inside every supercomputer. My discovery of practical parallel supercomputing helped China to assemble some of the world's fastest supercomputers. That discovery is the vital technology that upgraded China as one of the world's supercomputing superpower. However, the race to build the world's fastest supercomputer is the race to knowledge, not the race to the moon. My discovery of practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989, put the super into the supercomputer. My discovery of practical parallel supercomputing is akin to having 10,649,600 election polling stations in Nigeria and having only 19 voters queued at each polling station and consequently completing the election in 19 minutes instead of in 308 years. That reduction of election time from four centuries of time to election to merely 20 minutes is the basic principle that changed the way we understand how to put the super into the supercomputer. The discovery of practical parallel supercomputing that occurred on the 4th of July, 1989, opened our eyes and enabled us to see the supercomputer in a different way. How does the new, the new parallel supercomputer benefit you? The next time the weather forecast made you reach for your umbrella, you did so because the parallel supercomputer was used to make that forecast. The next time you drive your car, you did so in part because the parallel supercomputer was used to discover and recover the crude oil that was refined as the fuel in your car. That is the reason one in 10 supercomputers are purchased by the petroleum industry. If you were evacuating your family and doing so in response to a tsunami flooding or an earthquake warning, then you should send a thank you note to your parallel supercomputer scientist for enabling the tsunami or earthquake forecast that saved your family's lives. And if you own a self-driving car, you should credit that technology to the parallel supercomputer that is within your self-driving car that enables it to train itself over time. And that's how the new parallel supercomputer benefits you. Thank you. Insightful and brilliant lecture.
insightful and brilliant lecture.